What's up, everyone? Welcome back to 10 Minute Offense. It's the All Star Weekend Edition, I guess I should say. The All Star One Day, which was today. It was a Sunday, so I think everybody had a chance to, to hang out and watch all the, the skills competition, the three point, the halftime dunk contest, and the All Star game. So, what did you think? Is this something they should continue doing in the future if, you know, we're, we're going to continue living through a pandemic? Or did you not like it? I mean, let me get your uh, your thoughts and feelings on on the one day deal. Uh, it, I liked it. it you I did. Didn't, All right. Yeah, I'll tell you. I didn't watch the dunk contest. It was halftime, and you know, not to dog those guys, but they don't exactly get you hyped up to the three guys they had to watch the dunk contest. So I know I was supposed to watch it for the show, but. I decided to take a break, <laughs> uh, but watching the three point contest was fun. The skills competition, I, I thought has kind of been lame for a while now. Um, you know, why do the big guys always win that thing? I don't get that. I mean, yeah. I don't. Luke, Luca didn't even take his jumpsuit off. So, <laughs> yeah. so, but it, it was cool. I, I mean, you know, they're going to, when things at some point, whenever they go back to normal, they're going to go back to the, the, the whole weekend thing. Cause that's, it's just at the end of the day, it's all about money. So, you know, they, they want fans to attend the, the Saturday thing separately from the all-star game. But as far as having it all, like on one night, it was, it was cool. It was yeah. Felt a little long towards the end of that, the, the actual game, which I know we'll get into in a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. what do you think, Jules? Like, is this uh, something you want to continue doing or, um, you know, what'd you think of the one day? Yeah. I, I liked it just because of uh, like the pandemic that we're in, but obviously next year, like, I feel like they need to obviously space it out from Friday to Sunday. We give the, sp- the players some resting leeway time, enjoy it with their family, their friends, you know, go to the dunk, uh, three point contest, skill contest on Saturday, and then wrap it up on Sunday. And what was your favorite uh, of those three? I, I like the three point contest. Yeah, me too, there man. Was, there was some shooters in that in that competition, and, and it came down to the last shot. Won it. it literally came down to the last shot, the last money ball in the corner. So, yeah, I feel like that's usually the most exciting one in terms of you know flair at at the end the dunk contest is i'm sorry the dunk contest was they should have just skipped that dude because <laughs> like did they prepare these dunks or what man like I can't, that wasn't I, even a show I, I was i had it on but i was doing other stuff so i i wasn't watching i'm watching. Like, i was getting food but when i came back on and i saw uh, <laughs> simon's kissing the rim or about to kiss the rim he could have yeah I'm like wow like simon's guy has bounce so I, yeah, I, 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 didn't I didn't know Stanley I mean, and OB, but I heard some people liking their dunks. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I think the broadcasting was a little off too, because no one was there and it was, you know, they were like, they didn't have an announcer for, you know, the three point contest, but they did for the all-star game. So it, it just kind of felt weird, the whole production, um, but they did it. So props to the NBA. I didn't think they'd really get that off. Um well, let's see here. So we have a couple other topics kind of to go over. I, I know Giannis won the uh, the MVP just real quick. Was that would you agree with that or you got something something different, someone different? I definitely agree with it. Man went 16 for 16, three for three from uh on for, from three. That's very impressive. Set an all-star record. I was impressed with that. Yeah, it's, it's hard to argue with that. I, I tweeted it, and then I looked, and it got deleted. I, I put Team LeBron by 30 and Steph Curry for MVP. So if it wasn't going to be Giannis, I thought Steph could have gotten it. But it's it's hard to not give it to a guy that shoots 16 times. And, I mean, most of them were dunks. But still. still hey, impressive. you didn't miss a shot. <laughs> I, I know, man. It's kind of crazy. So... <laughs> And then just on Steph, because I know we were texting about him the other day, like in the three-point contest, just watching, you know, all those guys are great players that were in that three-point contest. His his shot is just a billion times smoother than all of their shots. 
<laughs> even know? even a guy like Damian Lillard, who I think is challenging him for someone. I mean, no one's going to ever fully challenge Steph, but someone that can kind of shoot from his range. Oh, dang, yeah, dang, for sure. Yeah, that half court stuff was. But he, but you're right. Like he's he's even beyond that. Like you can't even compare it to this guy as far as shooting goes. Yeah. So. Yeah, I put Dame and Steph in the in one category, and Clay Thompson. Let's not forget. I think that. Steph's above both of them. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Dame has that range though, because he just pulled from half court, doing that in games, and he finished it's the game with impressive. that too. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Who you think Giannis should have won it, Javon? I think so too. Yeah. When you we don't miss a shot. I, the only, I, I guess I would have – runner-up would have been Steph, but I think Giannis deserves it. Yeah. I would put Dame in there. He had a 32. When you don't miss a shot and you shoot it 16 times. Even the, yeah. three, even the three that he should have missed, banked. The garbage bank. Feeling yeah. good. Which was <laughs> – Feeling real cool. good. So – yeah, I, so – And I like that LeBron oh, – Go ahead, Steve. Go no, ahead, Steve. Go fast. I like that LeBron didn't play much. Yeah, yeah, I'm and really I, happy. That kind of segues into our next topic. So, yeah. um, you know, on Zoom, it's it's kind of we get some overlapping when we both try to talk. But as far as LeBron goes, as far as the Lakers go, what's kind of our, our outlook here? And who is the one team that we don't want to see in the Western Conference Finals? Go, go ahead, Jules. Julian. Yeah. Uh, that's two teams. I will go um, depending on like how many fans are allowed. I'll go with Utah just because that's always a tough atmosphere to play in and with the altitude. And I'll give the Clippers their respect as well. Um, they have two superstars, and then the role players will fit in, do what they're needed to do, score, play defense. So I'll say those two teams. Okay. Yeah. I got a I got a list of five. Um, <laughs> and, and, well, just to, I was just being thorough. Uh, I'll give them two Very. from five to one in the order where I'd be worried of them. Uh, the Blazers, just because we touch on Dame for a second. And if there's fans, uh, Lakers don't always do well out there. Phoenix, just because they're young. I also think everybody just wants to beat the Lakers. Um, the Nuggets, kind of that revenge factor last year, Joker you know, top three MVP candidate right now, in my opinion, the jazz, like what Jewel said. And then I got the Clippers number one, just because it's, it's, it's hard to not buy into that, you know, battle of LA, um, just all the trash talking, Pat Beverly. So that if, if I'm going to be worried, uh, it would be those, those teams in that order from, from least to greatest. Okay. Yeah. So Julian, you got jazz as your team that you don't want to see. And then Steve Clippers, it's so weird. Like I want to see the Clippers, but at the same time, I don't because obviously the battle of LA, it's, it's a guaranteed, you know, that's a fade right there. But at the same time, like they're probably the best equipped to match up with the Lakers. I, I love the jazz and what they're doing, but I don't think it's going to transition or carry over to, to the postseason, So I would have to choose, choose the Clippers. And then I guess moving forward, I mean, what is the, the, I, I mean, Blake Griffin just went to the Nets, So that gives him a little bit more of an interior presence. Is that still something we're looking at? Like with the squad saying, man, how are we going to get someone to, to block out board and, and, you know, protect the, the hoop. From the Nets, just, or it, like if, if the Lakers make it to the finals and face them, you mean? Yeah, or just like what's the what's the kind of the need of the team moving forward? Are we gonna oh, make a the deal need for like the Lakers? Yeah. Yeah, I, I still think they need a big if there's a way to get I know it's hard to get to get JaVale McGee back, they'd have to the Cavs would have to trade him to a different team and then that team would have to cut him and then the Lakers would have to sign him. So I doubt that's happening. I doubt they're getting Drummond. Um I know they're yeah. talking about PJ Tucker, but he's you know he's a good player, but he's, he's six, five. So that's not really, that's not what we need. Yeah. It's not what I'm looking for. So for, and you know, I don't even think I know a while back off, off our show, we talked about cousins. I don't know if that really helps them either. 
Um, so I was looking at guys that aren't bigs like like Wayne Ellington or, or Kyle Anderson. Um, you know, they're not thinking that Ellington is going to stay with the Pistons. He's shooting 37% from three, 45% overall. So he, he could be a key contributor off the bench uh, at the two. And Kyle Anderson is 13.7 boards, four assists. I know he might not get that much time, you know, to produce those numbers with the Lakers, but if they're not going to get bigs, maybe a couple guys like that that could be available. Yeah. L.A. connection with those guys. Wayne Ellington back with oh, Kobe yeah. coming back. Yeah. And that's what LeBron likes. He, he likes shooters around him. And that's what, what the Lakers should acquire. I agree. Like some type of shooting. And I like Kyle Anderson, slow-mo, UCLA Bruin. Yeah. He's a smart player. He he's very unselfish and I see I could see him fitting in too. So I like those players. Yeah. Yeah. Kyle Anderson, UCLA. I forgot about that. Yes. Um, it looks like the Pistons are in sellout mode. So yeah. why not, you know, ship Ellington over to to us? I think there's I think this year though, I feel like a lot of teams really feel like they have a chance to win it. Um, so you could see a real heavy kind of buyer's market where yeah you know, where there's, all, there's, all these different teams are going for all these yeah the players. same guys mm -hmm. yeah so it's going to be interesting to see as we move forward and i still love our chances and we can touch on the nets real quick with the blake griffin trade i'm not sure i actually didn't even see who, who did they trade or how did that like what was no, the he, details of that he got bought out by oh it was a buyout yeah okay. so mm -hmm. they just signed him uh yeah i mean i i think you know the nets we're probably going to be the Eastern Conference favorites even before they find him. His his plays declined quite a bit, but like Julian <laughs> said in the text, he's reuniting yeah. with with DeAndre. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> and no more Lob City because Blake doesn't dunk anymore. Yeah. He hasn't had a dunk since 2019. <laughs> he really doesn't. <laughs> like that can't be real. No way. <laughs> no, all, all he does is rebound and shoot three. <laughs> exactly. Well, but they don't need any more three point for shoots. Yeah, they still they're still lacking size, defense. So, but they have the players' experience. You know, Blake will buy into the system. So it's going to be interesting to see how it all works out. Here, here's yeah. the thing: I'll stay healthy. I'll, I'll give the Nets or whoever makes it from the East. Man, I, I think the West is going to be a, a, a bloodbath. <laughs> I think Every from, year. from the first round to the Western Conference Finals, like teams are going to beat each other up. You know, like if the Warriors make it as an eight seed and they're playing Utah or Clippers. Yeah, and who, who wants to play them? Or Lakers. <laughs> like that. that's like, you know, you could see some some – upsets early in the first couple rounds and or at I, least a six or seven game series right to where it's stretching it out and and whereas you know the nets and, and sixers might coast all the way to the finals Dude, right have, have a sweep or two in there yeah it shouldn't exclude mm -hmm. the bucks from that but okay well it's very interesting fellas what will uh what will we see is as we move forward so the nba is going to kick off i think on what is it tuesday or thursday they get started again. Tuesday or Wednesday, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it's Wednesday. Wednesday. Oh, cool. Well, we're going to be falling all the way to the finals, so stay tuned if, uh, if you love the NBA and we got you. So um, we'll be here for you. 10-Minute Offense is signing off.